Today, we're going to talk about the event that when I booked the tickets for prompted my manager to message me and say that if I don't take a mandatory vacation at the end of August, he is going to stage an intervention. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment. And today we are talking about Rattleship which was a rave on a battleship put on by Brownies and Lemonade. Basically, I found this TikTok. They're playing music so at like 11 o'clock at night while I was scrolling, having my mellow downtime for bed, okay? And I was like, that's doable. I can do that. A rave on a battleship? That sounds like it could be a disaster. Naturally, I have to go. That's the motivation. So I posted like, gosh, do I want to buy tickets to this? It'd be a nightmare. I'd have to do another five hour road trip for this because it's in Alameda, which is in the Bay Area. And I had just done my San Jose drive to go to the uh, Jurassic Quest. And so I was like, God, do I want to do this again to myself? Because I was miserable. That was miserable. Not to mention that this would also be during Anime Expo, which I was fairly certain I was going to go to. I ended up deciding, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I bought the ticket. And my manager messaged me because he saw my Instagram post on its stories that said, like, I bought another ticket. He was like, I thought you were taking a break. I was like, right now, yes, I'm napping. <laughs> I am taking a break. He said, okay, you're going to take a legitimate vacation at the end of August or... He's gonna lock me out of my account. Valid, fair, I appreciate it. Thank you for caring about my well-being. Um, Cause clearly I'm not doing that. <laughs> this weekend was insane. I, I decided to be an absolute lunatic this weekend because this weekend I didn't just do Anime Expo. I then went to a VTuber concert and then I left at 3 a.m. to drive to Alameda and then went to this concert and then left at midnight to drive back. I'm crazy. I went to Rattleship. I went to day two. I don't know why. Day one, I think was already sold out when I saw it. So I got a VIP last tier, $99.95. Service fee was $16.56. So for a total of $116.51 was my ticket to day two of Battleship. Rattleship, sorry. It's Rattleship because it's a rave on a battleship. Rattleship, get it? It's punny. Brownies and Lemonade. I had never heard of them prior to this. And when you go on their website, it does just say, we're making moves and keeping you on your toes. That's their about section. And then they have a link to a Nest HQ documentary. And that documentary is from six years ago. Basically, uh, Brownies and Lemonade is a rave company based on what I can tell. They just had a 4th of July one yesterday. Today is the 5th. They have a show coming up at the Roxy. They're just an event company that just does like music shows and events and things like that. So Rattleship was a two day event. And the whole shtick with a lot of these things is usually they don't disclose who the headliners are until day of or even then when you're there. Even this, like for Rattleship and I was there, they didn't disclose the lineup until like the day after the full lineup. It's kind of like a, as you're there, you see who's there. It's a surprise. Yay. So even like the poster, when they sent the Rattleship poster, like it just says XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
I'm making a full goddamn video. Because half of being a content creator is just having the audacity to make it. Because even when I make a video, there's so many times where I put out a video and I was like, this is gonna be a 10 of 10. No one's gonna wanna watch this. No one's gonna care about this. And then you guys make it a one of 10 or a two of 10. And it's honestly great, but sometimes I'm like, this is really hard for me to say no to things. I'm not saying you're enabling me, but you're enabling me. So we got inside and I was one of the first people inside because I was right at the front. VIP had a separate line than GA and GA was all one line. And then I think it became two separate lines. I went through, they didn't even check my bag. There was two entrances, but I went through the side one. I was kind of in the back of the main area. So walk forward to the front. Now, the entirety of GA is inside the battleship. The only section that was outside was part of the VIP section. We technically got one, one of the outdoor decks. We got a little bit of an outdoor deck available for us to go outside. And there was a few people smoking out there and talking half the night, but that's the only outdoor area that was there aside from the bathrooms, which are off site on the dock. There was no bathrooms on site of the uh, battleship. There are bathrooms on the battleship, but I'm assuming because they're probably like one or two stalls only. They wanted to avoid that and dealing with that and putting the museum through that. Valid. Okay, I'm coming to you from inside the porta potty. Getting thrown off this thing is a nightmare. The bathrooms are out on the dock and uh, trying to get them off is very much a hazard. So uh, we're going to see if I can get back onto the ship. I will be shocked if it is achieved. Okay, go. Okay. There were VIP bathrooms that were slightly nicer. They were nicer. They were not cleaner, but they were slightly nicer. Get inside, film a little bit of the uh, DJ that was starting. It was Villa. That was who's starting. I think it was mostly different the second night. I think you guys had asked if I'd seen Maddie on and um, they were not there while I was there. So I was like, I did not see that because I thought it was just someone who came after I left because I did end up leaving around midnight because I had to drive back. And I was like, I think I've gotten enough for my video. I think this is solid. So Villa was who was up on stage while we were doing it. And she was going ham before anyone was even in there, which was good. And that's when I saw the VIP area. Now, what was cool about the VIP area was that there was literally one VIP area. So there was an artist area that I think was a setup area that was down at a lower deck, which we could not get into. But VIP was literally like, I was talking to one guy back in VIP who was like, yeah, I just met Villa like the first opening DJ I met her. We're literally behind the stage, which is really cool. Which for me as someone who likes space, I know the irony is there for me telling you in the Swamp Gala video that raves do not appeal to me. And then immediately I go and drive five hours to go to a rave on a battleship. But the key word is on a battleship. I want random shit. I, I want random, crazy, Amanda might get murdered but probably won't, but she's gonna go anyway so that her friends are concerned. Like this is where I find, <laughs> that's what I want for my random excursions. Um, but as far as like my fun downtime, I'm not gonna go to a rave. For a video, sure. For funsies, I'm good. But I really think that the VIP area was 100% worth it. It was it was pretty great. And I, I do love the ability, one, to see a different side of the stage. I love the technical side of these things. I always talk about that. I love seeing the behind the scenes. And also, um, if you're someone who, you know, maybe you like rays, but you don't like feeling like you're gonna have an epileptic seizure because of the lights and the screens behind us. As you can see in my clips, there's uh, the, the big screens behind the DJs. From backstage, that was way less drawing. Like you could still hear the music perfectly and all that. And I was wearing my loops the entire time. Shout out loops an official sponsor of the channel. They're not affiliated with me at all. I just love them. Um, they've been very helpful the last few days, especially being behind the stage. It was loud as shit. So having the loops in, very helpful. And uh, loops are great because they just basically block out like the harmful frequencies more than anything, but you can still hear the music perfectly fine. I could hear the DJs when they talked perfectly fine. It was great, it was perfect, I loved it. I always think that different types of genres of music have different type of little idiosyncrasies, I guess that's the word maybe, that are like just common at all the shows. So like uh, the barricade rocking, that's very common that I've seen at a lot of rave and EDM shows and things like that. So the barricades at front, these guys were going fucking ham. Also, side note, there's something, uh, there's, I don't know if there's actually a name for this, but it's this kind of little quirk that it's very common in a lot of celebrities where it's like the ability to always find the camera, find the lens. There's this joke with Tom Cruise where he'll be, the, a photographer will be taking a photo of a crowd at say like Wimbledon or something. And he'll be the only one that's like smiling for the camera when this is clearly a telephoto lens far away, things like that. There's um, a lot of photos of Fifth Harmony when they were still Fifth Harmony. Normani is the only one who's like posed ready for the camera. She's always the one finding the camera. You know, this crowd at Rattleship are people who find the lens because they had a bunch of photographers running around. The amount of people who were like constantly, like I could see them looking at the camera from where I was backstage. That was crazy. I thought that was very funny. There was like this group of guys that were like directly across from me at the front of the barricade. And these guys were going 
hard the entire fucking time. They were going ham. As far as rocking the barricade, like these barricades are heavy. You know, they're designed to be barricades. People are going hard. I was like, I wonder if this thing tips over, if it's going to kneecap someone, like it's going to break someone's shin. Have you seen, sorry, I just threw up because I thought about it. <laughs> Have you seen those um, full contact sports in the octagon when someone kicks someone on their knee and it's like two bones hitting like six technically of your kneecap. And so their, their, their shin just snaps. Is it the femur? No, the femur's up top. What's the, the bottom one? I'm gonna throw up. Just search um, leg snapping MMA fight. You'll see the clips. But like, I imagine that that's what would happen to someone's shins, someone's leg. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. Someone's <laughs> blood and gore, fine. Someone's leg getting broken from a kick. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. But I imagine that would happen if like this barricade tipped over and then that. So at the start, I was not behind the stage. I'd gone, I did a loop to go check it out. Um, well, first I had done taking selfies with a bunch of the uh, planes and stuff. Cause I thought it was fun. I love museums when I'm not supposed to be in museums. You know what I'm saying? Like I love after hour museums tours. I love parties that happen in museums and I can go and wander around alone. I love that because I am a nosy bitch and I hate feeling like I'm being pushed around at a speed that I don't want to do. Either I want to walk faster or I want to not be rushed. I'm never at like museum tour group guide speed. They're never at the speed I wanted to do. It's like listening to an audio book at like 0.5. It makes me want to peel my skin off. You know, um, it's not, do I have ADHD? Anyway, so originally I was not backstage after I'd done my loop, I'd gone so I could see the front of the stage from the barricade area for the VIP section. Cause so there was like a long walkway, but there were spots where we could basically stand up against the wall or up against the barricade. They didn't want us blocking the aisle, but we could do both. And so I was kind of leaning back. I got my Red Bull cause I was like, I'm so fucking tired. Even though I took a five hour nap after I got there, not enough sleep apparently. Cause I was still fried. Side note, I've known this for a while, but I want to share this with anyone. Um, a great cheat code. Cause maybe you can lie. Maybe this will help. The easiest way to uh, weasel out shitty men at events is tell them you're not drinking. This is Red Bull. This is Diet Coke. That's it. I don't drink. Not that they offered to buy you a drink, but like if they ask you if you're drinking, how many drinks have you had? Things like that. Oh, I don't drink. This is Red Bull. Very quick. The moment they lose interest. Goodbye. Thank you. Saving my time. Do I need to drink to like you? Is that the, is that what you're telling me? Most people were very chill. Um, especially for the fact that I was alone because they clock it obviously, cause I'm not standing or dancing with anyone. So they're like, Oh, she must be here alone. No big deal. They were floored when I told them I drove up from LA. They were like, you did what? Oh my God. Respect. One dude was like, are you going to stay in the Bay area for a while? I was like, no, <laughs> I have to leave. <laughs> I'm going to an anime convention. And then he was like, Oh, so you like anime. And I was like, yeah, I don't know how if I feel how this is going. I'm very okay. You know how they say go into the spaces of where you would find, like where you want to be and that's where you'll find someone that you want to date. The problem is, is that I go to spaces that I normally wouldn't go to. So like, why would I date someone from the space? It's not you. It's just like, I am a homebody. I'm not someone that's going to go to a rave. So you don't want to date me because I'm not your rave babe. I'm not the pretty rave girl. Like I'm just, I'm just not. There's tons here. Talk to them because I'm not your, your rave babe. I'm just not. The only place I meet people is when I go out to these events. And then it's also like, I, I'm not part of these events. Really, not necessarily. This is why I'm single. It's my own fault. I know that. I know that. I do this to myself. It's fine. There was a moment where I was like, okay, I'm gonna go find a bathroom because I had had my Red Bull and I was dancing around a little bit. And I went to go to the bathroom sign where I knew it was the way to get down to the bathroom. So because they were still having people come inside, it did become a, a bit of an issue because they had basically caused a traffic jam because there's only so much room on the ramps to get onto a literal fucking battleship that there was a definite flow of traffic issue. What they should have had is that they should have had one ramp that was designated. This is the off ramp. No one's allowed to come up this ramp. They did have one that was kind of going up and down, but then that was something that was kind of designated later. So there was one, like the bathroom sign was still pointed this one. They're like, you cannot go down. So there was a lot of issues and they were like kind of yelling at us and people were getting agitated. Oh yeah. They also had like a, a, a brownies and lemonade were selling merch. I never actually went up and go to go check that out because I was like, I'm going to explore this battleship museum. So I was going to explore that more than anything, but they were selling a bunch of merch and they sold out. Is this like the a24 of rave companies? What do you mean you sold merch and you sold out? What? I don't know why that's so foreign to me. That's crazy. But like literally sold out of merch out early, like before I left, they sold out. So like in the first two hours they sold out. 
That's crazy. Barricade rocking is very common. So of course, once the beat drops for one song, this one guy was in the, connected to the barricade section because the barricade section was just the regular like metal dividers. They weren't like the big barricade dividers, you know, like the really heavy weighted ones with the bases and all of that. These were ones that were just like, this is where the wiring is. Do not go back there, that type of thing. So a guy started doing that and they immediately were like, dude, no, stop it. Knock it off. Um, and then he did it again, like several times. So he was feeling the vibes. I just kept stepping away from it. Cause I was like, ah, this is not going to, I'm, I'm like at the high where this is going to whack me in the tit. I don't want, that does not sound pleasant. So, um, I was backed up from that. Oh yeah. The fire alarm got pulled. Apparently this happened night one, two, where someone just kept pulling the fucking fire alarm. So they pulled the fire alarm, the lights are going off. And like when you, when the stage lights are on, you really can't tell that the alarms are going off and the lights are going off on the ship. Cause obviously all the other lights are off. Can we all be chill and mellow while the fire department comes in here? We're gonna do that. We're gonna take this time to look left, look right, make a new friend. We just wanna keep everybody safe. We wanna keep the party going. So let's be mellow. Give it a couple seconds and to come in, check it out. We'll be on our way. The guy that I had been talking to, he was like, yeah, apparently this happened last night too. Like, how are you gonna be such a hater that you're pulling the fire alarm? We're all just vibing. We're all just having a good time. The fire department came, the lights are off. We're all just kind of hanging out, staying in the same spot. Um, some people chose then to go get drinks and things like that. But I stayed where I was because I was like, if there is something, obviously they have an extra way to get off for a talent. And that was gonna be my way off the ship. I was gonna launch myself over a DJ if I needed to evacuate that ship. I don't mind. But also if they were gonna like have people leave, like, hey, we're at capacity, we need to remove X, Y, and Z or something, they're probably not gonna start with the VIP area. So I was like, I'm gonna stay put and stay out of the way. So we were cleared, the fire department left. I don't I don't know if they ever actually came because like I said, I stayed where I was, uh, but they did seem like they did come and check things out. Uh, however, the fire alarm did go off again and again. And it, at a certain point, it was just going off the entire night. So I don't know what the deal was. I don't know who thought it was funny. I thought all fire alarms now either have, have dye packs. That's what I thought it was, where you pull it and it immediately spits out a dye pack so that they can alert who pulled it. I thought all modern buildings had that. Like if I pull a fire alarm at this apartment building, there's probably a dye pack that's blue or something that's gonna explode and cover my arm. It's like a messy powder. It's not something you can wash off. It's not like paint, I don't think. It's like a splat of like pigment that just immediately shoots up your arm. Like even if you're at an angle, it's gonna hit you. This is an old ship though, but I mean, it's like they had some modern security systems and some modern C systems. The energy was great. The crowd was crazy. Lights are cool. I always like different light shows from like from the front, like the cool laser lights that were projected on the ceiling because of the angle of the ships, the USS Hornet's ceiling. The light display was very visible from backstage, which was very cool. And yeah, I walked out. Would I go to another brownies? I mean, this was a fairly well done rave. When I had gone down to go to the bathroom, this one guy was yelling at this girl. She was like, my friends are up there. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. Like he was losing his shit on this girl, but people were being really pushy down there trying to get on the ship, which I get on one thing. Cause also in my brain, I would think that there is a capacity issue. So I also would be worried about if I'm trying to get on a thing, if I need to get on a thing. But like at that point it was like, I mean, I got there super early. I got there, like you see in the footage, I'm there before anyone else is there. This thing was full stocked full. I would worry because there was clearly an issue with getting on and off the ship for the bathroom, that there was probably an issue getting on and off the ship if there was an actual fire or an emergency. Like I can imagine that this would probably be very dangerous because there is only what three ramps to get on and off that thing. But I go again to another brownies and lemonade event. Sure. Would I go in my free time? Probably not. No offense. I just, that's just not my thing. Uh, I had fun. It was cool. I, I always go into these like, things like determined to have a good time. I had a fun time. And the uh, the cost of drinks were not too bad. They weren't great. But I mean, it's like I've definitely had worse like literal anime expo. I had worse drink prices, so it's fine. I tried to get another flag on my way out because they had made rattleship flags that I and I got one, but someone swiped it from me while I was there, which is a bummer. I tried to get another one. I don't think they had any there. And then all of the merch that they had was pretty much sold out when I left. Anyways, that's gonna be it. Have you ever been on a rave? Have you ever been on a rave on a battleship? Have you ever been on a battleship? Have you ever been to the USS Hornet when it's not a rave ship? When it's not rattleship, you just went while it's an actual museum. Um, have you ever been to a brownies and lemonade event? Did you go to either of these nights and you didn't see me there or you thought you saw me and you were like, no swell doesn't come to raves. I'm everywhere. I'm Mothmanda. Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Social Hands Podcast. Reminder that Swell Entertainment is now on Spotify. This episode will be available tomorrow. Reminder, I have merch. I don't know if there'll be a merch design for this one. 
We shall see. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also like support my Patreon, leave us down below. Like someone on my social media. That'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Were my favorite parts of the rave, being able to go behind the stage and see that set up as well as uh, being able to take photos with planes. Yes, yes, it was. Thank you, Amy, Andrew, Alan, Awful, Aslan, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, Anna, Corey, Daniela, Dirty One, Don, Donnie, Ellie, Evan, Eric, Eol, Ghostly, Hopeless, Homer, Jay, Incognito, Jasmine, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Leah, Lex, Luisa, Luis, May West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew S, Mumor, Medic, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathan, Hat, Pen, Pink, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Qwerty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Will, Wendy, William, Zendry, Zwing.